Hey, it's FASD Awareness Month, and today we are going to talk about executive functioning. Executive functioning is like this super interesting part of the brain that I did not know ex existed, except that I use it like all the time. Um, and in many ways, I'm really good at it, and in other ways, I struggle. I can't remember people's names to save my life, but executive functioning is super complex and big. So um, it involves how your brain organizes things. Um, and so there are people who can have very high IQs and can know a lot of information and understand really complex subjects, um, but they can't tie their shoes or they can't keep their bills straight or they can't get to work on time, right? Have you heard of those kind of people? And so um, we can separate that. When we think in the context of autism, we think, oh yeah, those are two, two different parts of the brain. But when we talk about FASD, because not all, but 70% um, of the kids with FASD have IQs higher than 70. But IQ deficiencies can be a symptom, especially when we have third trimester um, prenatal alcohol exposure. Um, so then we kind of just are like, oh, well, it, like it's their low IQ that's preventing them from doing this. But that's not, it's two different parts of the brain. So when you test an IQ, you can still not be great at executive functioning, even if you have a high IQ. Um, so there's two different things. The brief is the assessment that we use, I guess in America, maybe everywhere, I don't know, to test executive functioning. Um, and that can be tested as, as young as two and a half, I think. Um, but it's something that you can test as much older also. And executive functioning is, is looking at a lot of things that we think of when we think in regards to ADHD, which is why FASD gets misdiagnosed so much. But um, executive functioning is the ability to organize thoughts, um, the ability to use the information you have. That's what um, Donna DeBolt says, that executive functioning, I IQ is what you know, executive functioning is what you do with what you know. And she also says um, individuals with um, good executive functioning are seen as good adults. So my ability to organize my life, even though it feels very chaotic at times, um, I can organize things like crazy, which is how I'm able to do all this stuff with um, my business. Um, but then like when it comes to finances, like not my jam, that's why my sister does what she does, right? Um, but we think because I'm a successful adult, we think, right, that's fine. But when we have kids, we're like, you're not, you're just not trying hard enough. You're, they always don't do their homework. What if they can't remember to do their homework, guys? What if they can't do that? So if we picture homework by itself, think about all the executive functioning pieces you need to do homework. So you are in class, you get assigned work. You have to remember to write it down in your binder which or your um, agenda, which means you have to know where your agenda is. Um, so you have to remember to write it down. So the teacher's saying it up there and you've got to transfer the information down to your agenda. Um, then you have to take whatever they've given you, your book or your worksheet or whatever, you have to put it in your bag with your agenda. But usually you can't take your bag to class. So you have to remember to do it when you go back to your locker the next time, maybe even at the end of the day. So at the end of the day, you still have to remember all of the things that you were told in different classes and what you have to take home for. I don't, honestly, I don't know how kids do it, but whatever. You have to keep track of all of this stuff in order to figure out even what you put in your bag. Then you have to take your bag home. You have to get it all the way home without losing it. Then you have to take it and you have to think to yourself while you're at home, I have homework and you have to pull the paper out of the bag and you have to do the worksheet or whatever it is. And then you have to remember to put it back in the bag, take it all the way to school and then take it to the right class because usually you can't take your backpack, take it to the right class and then pull it out at the right time to turn it in. That's like a lot of steps. I didn't even list every piece of executive function because in addition to that, you have to use the information you learned earlier in the day and you have to use it on the worksheet then. That's a lot. That is so much, guys. So we don't do homework um, because it's, it's of no benefit. Their brains are so tired at the end of the day. It does not benefit us to do homework. I mean, now we're homeschooling, so we don't do anything. But um, no, we do a lot. We still learn. It's just it's there's no assigned homework, right? Um, everything they're doing with their one-on-one -on -one tutor, which is me. Um, so when we're looking at executive functioning, we want to be able to have empathy for the challenges and then look at how we can change things. So, so for some kids, if they have technology, they can organize it that way. Uh, for some kids, it's just not something that's gonna happen. So how do we change our expectations to help them still succeed? Does it really matter if they redo the work that they did in class at home? Or is it better if they do that worksheet with a teacher at school during what we call, um, is it study hall? No, not study hall call it something, study skills, that's what it is. Um, study skills, which is our intervention time with your intervention specialist. 
Um, and so is that a better time for them to do it? So how can you look at accommodating usually school to help them? Executive functioning requirements increase so much when you're in middle school. So when you go from elementary school to middle school, the executive functioning requirements increase a lot, which means that you're probably going to not do as well if you struggle with executive functioning. So a lot of our kids can do fine. They're okay until they get to middle school and they tank. And everybody's like, what is happening? And it's because the world is expecting so much. You have to go to different classes at different days with different teachers at different times. Like that is so much to keep track of. So how can you help your kid accommodate, um, adjust to that? Or how can you change the world to adjust to them? Because sometimes that's the best choice. I hope this helped. We will be back for Caregiver Tip Tuesday next week.